Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I uh, would, would ask, appreciate you being here today. And I would ask uh, several questions following up, uh, you know, on why didn't NHTSA know? And it is true that t hindsight is 2020, but it appears that some of your folks were at least sending up warning signals. I'm looking at uh, what I believe is tab 18 and the uh, DAD, which is the Defects Assessment uh, Division. And I know you know that, but not everybody watching on TV knows that. And so I want to make sure they know because I had to look it up. Uh, sent out and said, uh, not in one of their emails in uh, 2007, said, notwithstanding GM's indications that they see no specific problem pattern, DAD perceives a pattern of non-deployments in these vehicles that, that does not exist in their peers and, their, and that their circumstances are such that in our engineering judgment merited a deployment and that such a deployment would have reduced injury level or saved lives. When you combine that flag with the flag I think you mentioned earlier in your testimony that you were getting a, a number, if I remember correctly, it was about 200 and some complaints on this particular Cobalt vehicle that they were stalling out in the road or the engine was, was cutting off. And you, you start adding those together along with the fact that I believe you all knew that there were at least, uh, I think it was three, where the airbag didn't deploy and the ignition was in the uh, accessory mode. It would seem that somebody ought to have started an investigation that those coincidences might have been more than coincidences. And, and I would ask, I know you're trying to do things better, but apparently the person who put all this together was an investigator for a one-man law firm. He did have somebody of counsel, but basically you've got a one-man law firm with an engineering investigator who figures this out. So I would say to you, you know, what can you do better? And have you called on that investigator to come in and maybe train some of your folks that, that, to look at some of these coincidences? Because when you start seeing a series of negative things happen, that might be where you ought to be looking. Congressman, our team was looking at, at this issue. The, the defects assessment division was doing exactly their job. We have a system that is designed to raise those red flags. About half of the time, the recommendations of those defects assessment um, division end up moving on to investigations. Uh, this, what I see in this case is one of the things I mentioned before, which is one of the things we need to look at is how do we make connections between remote defect possibilities. In this case, you had one theory that was put forth, which was that the accessory, uh, the key being the accessory position could have caused airbag non-deployments. In the crashes that we looked at, the circumstances of those crashes led the investigators to believe that it was more, much more likely that the airbags didn't go off because of the circumstances of that crash. I, I understand, completely understand why it, it looks like well, but, but let me it should have been clear, but it's clear now in part because we have that clear connection from General Well, but let me, let me raise this concern. This memo indicates that there's a reliance, if you, and I'm implying this from the wording, notwithstanding GM's indication that they see no specific pop, pop, pattern problem. It shows, that statement shows a reliance on GM. Likewise, in your testimony, you state that, that this understanding was verified, talking about the power loss situation, this understanding was verified by GM's service literature during our due diligence effort. Now, if you've got a, a company that's got a car that's, that's not functioning the way it's supposed to, I would like to think that with 51 employees versus that one-man law firm out of Georgia, that you would look at something other than the service literature and not necessarily rely on GM indications that they see no specific pattern or problem pattern. So I'm concerned that there may have been too much reliance on information from GM, including their service, make sure I get the wording right, their service literature, and what they saw as problem patterns when, in fact, I think that you all are supposed to be finding the problem patterns. Now, I understand it's easy, in hindsight, sitting up here to say that, but these are warning signs that go off to me as a legislator that maybe you all need to take a look at that. And, you know, when you see problems, maybe the service literature of the company that you're looking at is not the best place to get your information. Congressman, j just to be clear, we did not rely on General Motors when it came to defects. Um, whether or not there was a defect trend. We did our own analysis of the data, and our own analysis indicated that the cobalt did stand out. I, I also wonder if I haven't been clear enough relative to that service bulletin. We did not rely on that service bulletin at the time. We did not rely on that information from General Motors. We relied on our experts' understanding 
of airbag systems. But their understanding of the airbag system in the Cobalt was based on the service literature for the Cobalt, according to your written testimony. Well, Am it, I not correct? Is that not what you said? Um, my testimony sounds like it was not clear enough. What happened was, once we found out about this defect, we looked into the service literature to confirm our understanding at the time. And the service literature that we looked at this year for that vehicle confirmed our understanding at the time, but which was that um, your understanding at the time and the service literature were both wrong. Isn't that correct? Yes or no? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. I yield back. Gentleman yields back. Now recognize Mr. Long for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank the chairman and the ranking member and all of the members on both sides uh, that have been here today. We uh, originally weren't scheduled to be in this soon, and so a lot of us had to change our travel plans.